It's lovely. Good evening, Zambia. Good evening, Africa. And warm welcome to this special interview on movie television from Zambia's capital city, Lusaka, with me, Innocent Piri. Of course, you can simply call me IP. Today is the 29th of 2020. Days are really uh, cruising to the year, of course, uh, to the D-Day of um, the general elections, or should I say the tripartite general elections. Now in a, trip, in a dramatic turn of event, he took, he took over the National Restoration Party in Narep in 2019, to be specific, on uh, November 14th, from a former, or should I say, founder who was a last Pimo Jr., who decided to retire from active politics. But despite, despite that, his main effort really is to find himself on the ballot paper come August 11th, aspiring to be a president of this country, wanting to sit and preside the affairs of the country while at plot one. His name is uh, Stephen Nirenda, who is now leader of NAREP. He makes an appearance in this program to discuss a wide range of uh, issues affecting Mother Zambia. Let's find out, you and I, if at all he has the solution that you've been looking for, as, as well as the people of Zambia, as well as the continent, to be able to judge in the next one hour plus. Allow me to welcome him again after a long time. He comes back now in the midst of the campaigns. Remember to follow the guidelines given by the Minister of Health to observe social distancing. You can also sanitize your hands, as well as for political parties like him that have been guided to ensure that they avoid mass gatherings. Mr. President, allow me to welcome you once again on this platform. The last time we met was about, uh, should be six months ago. I'm glad to, to, to be with you. Welcome. Uh, Mr. IP, thank you very much. Uh, Zambia is for Zambians, and only Zambians will develop this country. Thanks that we are again uh, talking to each other. Indeed. Thank you. We appreciate and once again, allow me to re-emphasize that I feel so glad when it, whenever I sit with you because uh, you mentored me to be where I am today. We don't take that for granted. Welcome back. Thank you. But uh, let me advise yeah. before we get any further. Sure. As I was mentoring you, I always said, mm. report without fear and favor. Right. I should not sit here to intimidate anyone. Right. You are free to ask me anything at heart because the people want to hear. Thank you so much. Let's begin from here. Having given me all the authority to ask you all those tough questions on behalf of the over 18 million Zambians that are watching right now, I'll, I'll ask you this simple question. I want to know, on behalf of the people of Zambia, what covenant have you made with the Almighty God? I know you are a Christian. Yeah. With sure. regards on how you want to preside the affairs of this country. Sure. Um, you see, there are two things, very important things, mm. that we should not forget. When you are born, you start breathing. It's God who gives that breath. One day he will take it out, then you are no more. Mm. Whatever I do, whatever I do, even before I come to this, uh, uh, this program, mm. I ask God to take over. Whatever I say, take over. Whatever I do, take over. Right. Make sure that we do the right things in this country. Mm. There's one thing, again, that I want to mention there. Uh, you know, Zambia was declared, the word declared, mm. a Christian nation. You don't declare. It's the way people live, the way people do things, the way people relate to each other. Mm. The way people are doing things in Zambia now, uh, the way the governments are being run, you cannot say it's a Christian nation. It, it, I can't say that. A Christian day, mm. uh, 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 national day of, national day of mm. prayers, mm. and then you know, they go to church from there, they start fighting, inciting people, insulting each other. Mm. It is not a way of Christian. You know, sometimes I love the way the Muslims are doing their things. Mm. If you go, like, to Dubai, like, the, the time that I don't know now, but when I was there, you can leave your stuff there, a wallet with a full of money. You go and sleep tomorrow, you come back, you find it here. Here in Zambia, you leave a wallet there. You just look this side, you turn, it's gone. It's gone. 
And you say you are Christians? No, you are not. Mm. Yeah? I remember I was in Europe one time. They are not Christians. They don't believe. They are uh, atheists. I was in, in, uh, with my son, and I gave the wallet to my son. In fact, my son went to collect some money, a lot of money for me. He had it in his wallet. He left his wallet on the seat. I said, look, my, what are we going to do, Gabriel? Mm. But we waited for two days. Somebody called us to say he found a wallet mm. with everything inside and so much money. That, you know, the way you live, the way you do your things, mm. it det determines your Christianity, your morals, yeah, your integrity, your principles about life. Mm. So for me, it's not about declaring. It's not about me writing in front of my face here to say I'm a Christian. No. For me, it is what I do, and I, I plead and pray that as Zambians, we should stop uh, this malpractice, mm. yeah? corruption, all these things that come with it, stealing, lying, and so on and so on. Mm. Let's look at the values of Christianity. That's the covenant. You, you remind me one of, uh, I think, the books I read, uh, written by one professor, Lumumba, mm. you know, who said, uh, it's a similar story you are telling me right now, to say we are different as Christians, not only in Zambia, but in several other countries. You know, uh, you find that when, in some churches, when a pastor is preaching, uh, when the women are about to go to the pulpit to give maybe, uh, uh, you know, offerings, the preacher will be in tell them to say, be careful and carry your bags as you come to give us around because, uh, because there are Christians here, you know. <laughs> it's just on a lighter note. You see? Yes. yes. But it's basically, it's part of our governance system that uh, really uh, something needs to be done. You've talked about that uh, for you, it's not about declaring this country as a Christian nation or no. wearing that umbrella. No. But it's about really the deeds and the do's that we do as a nation. Fantastic. Do you, as a president of NAREP today, if you are, go you are going to be voted into power maybe in the next few months uh, from now, maybe do you intend to abolish or maybe to, to remove this tag of Zambia being a Christian nation? No, 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 no. That, that's, uh, that's not a thing to do. Mm. Uh, for me, it's not to go and say, look, Zambia is not a Christian nation. No, let it be. Mm. But I'm just pleading with the people, mm. leave the values, leave your word. Don't actually pretend. Mm. Because truly speaking, if you see the political parties, the violence, the killing, the shooting, the what, the machetes that are there. Mm. And you, tomorrow you go and say, uh, uh, we are going to the, mm. the, to, the, to, to, to the National Day of Prayers. Mm. What are you doing? That's blasphemy. Mm. Yeah? First of all, go there with clean hands. Come out again with clean hands. You see, especially the leaders. You know, uh, uh, if we have to stop uh, this violence, a leader who lives by the Christian values is going to stand up and say, look, anyone who is found doing like that, there's no pardoning. Straight must be incarcerated. I've never had any of these two leaders mm. who are up there and are fighting and killing each other day in, day out. You, you sound to be a very radical person, uh, you know, aspiring to go to plot one. If he, I listen to you and the people of Zambia that are watching us right now. But uh, already in less than two minutes, you've mentioned a lot of problems that this country is going through. You've talked about the issue to deal with the violence. You've talked about uh, dishonest amongst, amongst ourselves. You know, uh, do you regret, Mr. Nirenda, having gone into politics, looking at all the problems that we have with this country? Mm. Uh, you know, if you form government today, I, I know that maybe it will not be easy mm. for you to change things overnight. Mm. Do you regret having gone into politics? Um, uh, you see, I get invited to go and talk about uh, success cycle. Mm. Uh, and one thing that I tell people mm. is that never regret of any decision that you made at any given time. Because the forces that were working on you at that time did allow you to make that decision. So I'm a person who does, I do not regret whatever I do. There are reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm. Moreover, I am doing it because I think I'm the right person to change this country, to mm. make sure that I, make it, I, I formulate a leadership, a leadership that is going to take this country up there. Now, as I'm talking like that, let me mention this. If you check this country from 1964, from when our 
our, our forefather, uh, uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, uh, he's still alive, I love that, he took over. Up to today, the country has been going down, 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 down. There's no time that it goes up. Where on earth? I say, to make a mistake is not a problem, but not to correct it. It's a big problem, and that's what it is. And the problem is very simple with us. If there's one president is going to check, analyze Zambia from 1964, even before 1964, up to today, all the six presidents that have been there, if they analyze and they see the problem, they will sort this country out. And I believe, I'm not trying to believe to uh, my, my excellences that have been there, I've got great respect for anyone who has been a president of this country, and I'll continue respecting them. But it's not wrong to talk about mistakes that they make. It's not wrong to say, look, this, you are my father. Thank you very much. I respect you. But if you see your father is driving into a dish, why not tell him? Our presidents who have been there, they have never analyzed these problems that we have, and I have. And that's why I tell myself, because I've analyzed it, I know what the problem is. I then I'll give medicine to this country. If you say this country is not developing from the time we got independence it's not until developing. now, yes. uh, we are going down. I think some people are going to argue with you. Most people thought that are in power because today, for them, they are singing the, the, the Alewe Lapo song. Mm. You know, they have instructed their members to begin not to fight people, uh, people like you in the opposition, but to really uh, lecture you or mm. remind you what the periodic front has done in the last maybe 10 years. Mm. And they are going to argue with you, you know. Uh, away from that, mm. just on behalf of the general public, I know that even as the people are watching us right now, uh, a few people fail to believe some of your manifestos, your plans, you are explaining right now on TV, mm. because some of these plans or uh, some of the uh, policies you are pronouncing right now that, people have heard them before. I, They've I, been there. People uh, sat on this platform before. Yes. Uh, 20, we can talk about 1991. People have been there sitting here. 19, 1976, some of yes. them. People are sitting again and preaching the similar message. I, 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 I tend there to are a number of you that are aspiring to go to Plot, plot 1 right now as I speak. Mm. You are about, should be, should I say, nine about somewhere there mm. or more than that. Yeah, 15. 15, right. rather. Mm. You know, thank you so much for, for that. You know, who is your, 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 your strongest contender or your threat whom you feel that when you sit, you look at the list of 15 uh, heads that mm. are there, you say, I think this political party or this leader for me, I think is my threat. There isn't. You know, when I stand up, I'm running 100 meters, we are sitting like mm. that. I look at my track. I concentrate on my track. There's nobody who is a threat. Mm. You know, don't substitute a lot, having a lot of money and actually having the ability to run this country. Having the ability to run this country has nothing to do mm. with you having all those monies that you have gotten from people who have, who have already bought the country, mm. which you have sold. You have all the monies, you shower them with T-shirts, what and what. I, I want to advocate mm. this, this campaign of T-shirts, mm. this campaign of tangas, this campaign of whatever should go away. Mm. Now, I'll give you, we are, this is a country where a lot of people are poor. They cannot even have a meal in a day. Now, uh, I want to calculate. The T-shirt is costing between uh, uh, 80 kwacha and 100 kwacha. Let me take 100 kwacha, it's easier. Now, if you're going to buy, say, 2 million T-shirts, like we have seen our other people, 2 million T-shirts times 100, what, how much does it give me? It gives me 200 million. What can that 200 million do in education? People, you know, that 200 million can be pushed in developmental issues. But look at what they are doing. We saw it in the MMD, in the MMD government. They, the whole old trees, what and what, vehicles, name it. And, and, and where, where do you get that money from? Okay, if it's from well wishers, what do they want from you? They, that's why the country is what it is. Because they bring you money to you, and you take that money, and you, once you take that money, you win, they are on you. You are sitting in a room, you're having a meeting, they just walk in and get what they want to get. There's you, no res respect. They, they will tell you, Mr. President, that uh, a well-wisher is not always a foreigner. You know, a well-wisher could be a citizen. 
For course. example, if I was a very successful business person, then I've got money. I mean, I can contribute to your political I, I want. I want to change you that know. that word from well wisher to a we, an ill wisher. A lot of people that we have here, they are ill wishers. Because when they bring those monies, mm -hmm. they are telling you to say, okay, once you go over, I want we, you get there. Mm -hmm. I want you to give me this contract, to do all these things. That's what we are seeing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've been there. I know these games. I've, I've, I've seen, uh, I've helped presidents, mm. and I've seen this happening. So it is, these people are not well-wishers. They are ill-wishers. Let's change. Let's, some, us, we have no problems. If somebody comes, say, here is the money. I want you because I believe in what you are doing. I believe in your ideologies. I think the country will go up. I will take it without any, any conditions attached. But we have seen. Don't think that this government does not know what the right thing is. They do. But why are they not doing the right thing? Because they are not the ones. Because they have used other people's money. So they have, the payback period is coming. It's, uh, that goes without saying. But uh, answering your question, there's no threat. Which a threat? Which a threat? There's no threat. I, I we have you launched... You, uh, you know, you, you, are, you, uh. you are called uh, underdog. You know, I, I don't know who calls underdogs, you know, uh, underdog, but people, wait. People are, are saying the only political parties that there that people are looking for, mm. or the alternatives, is yes. the UPND as well as the Patriotic Front. Uh, yes, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you want to say that mm. the UPND, they are very, very popular. We know they have been mm. around for mm. so The president who is there has failed five times, so would you not know? If I'm going to appear five times on a ballot, would you not know me? You, people perhaps would not know me because I'm only one and a half years yeah. in here. So that's not a problem. For me, that is not a threat. A threat is the idea behind it. That's what we have. Idea and the zeal and what we want to do. Mm. It's, I, I don't doubt, there's no questionable that uh, um, uh, UPND is popular. Mm. It's not questionable that uh, the incumbent, they are popular and they have got the muscles. Both of them, they've got a lot of uh, 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 financial muscles mm. and that's what they are using. We are not using financial money because we don't have that amount of money. But we believe what we are doing. Mind you, I want to remind you of the Bible. Sure. Faith, faith has conquered kingdoms. Faith, faith. Mm. yeah? I don't know in which book that is. I've forgotten, but Kapenani Jobs or whatever. Mm. But faith has con conquered kingdoms. And we believe. I want to tell you again a, a story about Goliath and David. You know about it. Nobody would have believed that David would have defeated Goliath. Yes. So be careful of what people say. So for me, it's the ideology that I have, the ideology what I believe in and how I'm going to take this country up. It's not about any threat about anyone. No. There is nobody who gives me a threat. If I talk about the leadership of the incumbent, it's, it's a, failed, a failed project. If I talk about the leadership of the so-called uh, 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 UPND, it's a failed project, and I'll tell you why it's a failed project. These people have been running the, uh, the western, southern, and northwestern part for years and years, mm. controlling from MP, coming to uh, mayor, coming to, to, to councillors, controlling the wealth of a city, the wealth of a council, that's where the money is. But what have they done? There's poverty. They, there is not even any single council that they can point out to say, here we have ch changed. But I will believe you me. And will you will you, see a councillor. I with you that uh, maybe you are speaking from the point of uh, not knowing the truth, what happens in governance. You know, uh, uh, I want to use uh, the word like uh, a better way. You let know, me cut you short there. The, the you believe, ignorance. you believe that you know. I'm 61 years old. Mm. I've helped uh, 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 leaders. I've helped even uh, when I was at, uh, uh, in Europe. I even helped uh, 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 President Chirua. That is, uh, is rest in peace. I spent a lot of time with President Rupia Banda. Mm. So you believe at my age and what I've done. So I would not know what goes on in government. I, mean, I would people. stand up and sit here and tell you to say I want to become a president without knowing. The people I'm not are talking about here that have yes. failed or mm -hmm. they have failed pro project or mm -hmm. political parties. Yes, these are the individuals that have come on, uh, on TV, radio, and testified to the people of Zambia that, that governance is not as simple as you want to define it. 
you know, you can accuse us to say we have failed maybe to develop southern province, we yes. have members of parliament under UPND, yes. or maybe Cuba Belt province, while they are members of parliament under uh, the Patriotic Front. Mm. But it's not about one individual. I will tell you. It's about you. the governance system I, 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 of the nation. Yeah. Um, if you are uh, not given the resources to develop that constituency or that ward, you cannot do it as a, as, as, as a councillor or maybe as, as a member of parliament. Exactly. That, that's why we have no leadership in this country. Because people think that the money should come from the central government. Mm. People think that the money should come from Lusaka. No, the money is in every district. That's why what we are saying, and nobody has said that, we are saying we are going to create millionaires in every district. That's the difference. You have said, my other fellow uh, politicians have sat here, mm. but no one has said this, what I'm saying. Resources, trees, uh, soil, uh, stones, water is in every district. And this is where you create wealth from. Where you are sitting there, what you are putting on everything that we have comes from the soil. So why should I say I cannot do it because uh, um, uh, I don't have money? Who is going to give you money? No one. I want to talk about myself since I'm setting myself up. I'm not coming from a rich family. My father, the, big, the, big, the furthest he went was a driver. That's the furthest he went. So, and, and uh, we, we were about eight in the family, and it was difficult. We are sleeping together, Pampasa, Ratijan, one blanket on top, one blanket down, and eating from the pot, all of us together now, 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 and women. But uh, I went to school and imaged. No one gave me money. So you cannot cry to say, look, I need money from Lusaka for me to develop. The money is in every district. The money is the fish that is in water. The water that is there, the soil, the trees, that is where the money is. You need, God gave us the willpower of thinking. To say, he have given you the resources and have given you the willpower to think. That's the difference between us and animals. So use your brains to develop that the result and put it in what you you want to use today we think that um, a chinese will come and develop for us it will not happen that's why we launched and this is what nobody also says zambia is for zambians only zambians will develop this country if this institution you have here no one will come from another tv station to do it you have to do it yourself but what are we doing in this country as I'm talking like that, let me ask you, let me ask these questions to everybody who's listening. Who owns banks in this country? One question. Who owns this seed, Ija seed, which our farmers and the plant, who owns it? Who controls the, uh, the, 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 the tourism? Who controls the mines? Which curriculum are you using in your schools? Do you med make med medicine? If you make medicines in this country, who owns them? If I give you one answer, it's a foreigner. So what is yours? Us the Zambians, we're like pawns, you know? They play with, the, with us. They take over the wealth. If I go now to, to arcades or wherever I go, in a, sit in a restaurant and things like that, who enjoys? It's, they are the foreigners. Our guys, we have our guys in compounds or from the villages, they don't even know how a restaurant, a proper restaurant looks like. And you say that we have developed. You say that this is a government. This is what we are going to change ourselves. We are going to make sure that that person who is from the village, that person who is from that compound, is able to go and sit anywhere where it feels like, is able to go and eat from a restaurant, is able to have a bank account. You need to change that. To change that, it doesn't happen by accident. If these guys think it happens by accident, they are lying. You have to put an effort. There should be a leadership with a vision, integrity, principles, and a sense of sacrifice. I'm sitting here today, I'm sacrificing. I don't have the money, but the little that I have, I'm sacrificing. So the, the, the time that I have, I'm sacrificing, and definitely, some people think when they sacrifice, and I tell my, my people who are standing as MP, if you think that you are, we are sacrificing, when you reach there, you start getting money or what and what, it will not happen because you will end up in prison. Any cabinet minister who is going to be with me, 
MP or whatever, in whichever position, you just smell of stealing, corruption, whatever. Whether you are on the street, you will land up in prison. And we will not, we will not pardon anybody. We've just seen. How do you say that uh, the, the prisoners should go home and, and rest for two weeks, and then they go home, they go and kill people? We, we, we have to I mean, uh, please. that issue. I think that's a wide <laughs> issue that you're going to talk about. But uh, we're in the midst of the campaigns, Mr. Steve Nirenda. Yes. And um, you, you are also busy trying to assemble a team of men and women that are going to help you transform this country. Yes. Uh, according to you, you are alleging that this country has not developed for the past uh, uh, no. more than 50 years. You know, yes. Meaning that, uh, using your own words, it has taken us more than 50 years to destroy this country. Yes. And then, uh, for how long would you uh, transform this country if you are, you are given uh, that mandate? 10 years. 10 years. 10 years this is country. Possible? Yes, it is. You need to have a plan, and we have a plan, and I can tell you. And you mean all the past presidents, they didn't have a plan, only your plan? Uh, well, be a I, as I said, you asked me first who has got a threat, mm. who is your threat. Mm. I told you to say, I have my own track. I'm running 100 meters. I concentrate on my track. Mm. The other one has got his. I don't know what they are doing, but you have seen. Show me, tell me one president. We have one president who has made it to make sure that it goes up. Numbers don't lie. We look, they are striking at UTH today. Why? Look at, we can't have even the statistics of the COVID, whatever, because we don't have capacity. We don't have money. You have to wait for donors. Donors, in fact, let me tell you, for me, I sit here. Talk about America. Talk about Europe. Talk about certain Asian countries. They are poorer than what we are. But what we don't have is the leadership. In terms of material, you can't compare. In Europe, would you even find coal, that black thing? is not there. They have nothing. But why are they giving us money? Do you think that money is for free? Have you seen? They give you an advert. You are running an advert. Then they say this is the, the American people with, with this, with this, and the university. You will see to save at pass and around. It's us, as, as if they of give course, us. Uh, I mean, uh, development comes with concerted efforts, you know. No. Not by one person. No. Or one country. Mr. Mr. IP, Mr. P, innocent, let me tell you, this country or Africa as a whole is the richest continent in the world today. Right. What they have destroyed of Africa is your mind and the way you think. That's what they have destroyed. And if you realize talked the last time. You take the TV, you give it to Chinese. Why should you do that? You take the minds you give to the Chinese. You take everything you give to the foreigners, and then you sit, and you say, we are, we are developing. I've asked you these questions. I mean, the government you see now, they are slowly taking back those minds that uh, belong to the, that we are you, you, you don't do, by the no, you don't do things. Doing what you are, you are talking about. No, 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 you don't do things like that. Mm. If you see what has been there, here and there, it can't work like that. Mm. If I'm going to take it away, I should have you, innocent, or someone else ready mm. to run it. I can't take it away and just sit and there's nothing that I'm doing with it. Mm. No, there must be a plan. What we are saying ourselves, Zambians can run these mines, but you need to prepare them. It's not just from the blues. As I said before, these things that you are seeing, success, development, and all these things, they do not happen by accident. People plan and work toward the plan. If you look at what's happening in this country, there is no plan. Okay, there is a plan, could be, but no plan that it takes us to success. And it's not a lie to say, look at the curve of development from when Kaunda took it up, up to today, the PF, it has been going down. Poverty levels, what? Name it. Everything is going down. The numbers tell us when Kaunda took over, we had a lot of money. One kwacha was buying two dollars. Our kwacha was equivalent to a pound. Look what it is today. It came to, to thousands and thousands. And there came President Sata, he saw this in peace. He chopped the zeros. Now, if he didn't chop the zeros, in actual fact, 
our Kwan Kwacha is equivalent to today to 20, 22,000 Kwacha. One dollar is equivalent to 22,000 Kwacha. That's what it is. Now, do you tell me that that is development? Figures don't lie. You can't hide uh, 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 economy development in the politics by going, we have done this, you sign this, I've seen pictures that are being used. This is a lie. Do you own those things? Those things are owned by foreigners. Look at the airport. Do you own it? No. You go everywhere. They are doing a project in, in to, 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 to fix the, the, the to, to, to rehabilitate the, the dam uh, <coughs> at Kariba. Who is doing it? It's not Zambians. It's the French people who are there, foreigners who are there. What are we doing ourselves? We are sleeping. We are too much, much more of talkative, talking and, and, and changing the constitution and becoming too, too clever in, in law and things like that. No, me, I'm saying, let the people who can make this country make it. And once they have made it, it has got all these skyscrapers, name it, what development. Then let the lawyers come and fight who is who. Let the economists come and fight. How do you fight where there's nothing? There's nothing. You want to fight on poverty. You have economists, economists experts of the poverty. It can't be. Let's build this country first of all. This country, we can build it more than Dubai. We can build it more than UK, England, London, and so on. Because we have it. Those guys, they took all the, they took the things from here, and we still have a lot of them. This is the way. The way here right up now is agriculture. Take the money from the mines as much as you can, because mines is a perishable. You, it may finish in 20, 30, 40, 100 years. It will finish. Agriculture will not finish. It will continue. As, as long as money is there and he takes care of his, uh, uh, the ecology. For the interest of time, uh, let me get your, um, your, your, your hope or understanding, your agenda with regards to promoting women into governance system of this nation. And um, suffice to mention that uh, congratulations, by the way, that you're among the uh, four political parties that have decided to pick on women mm. as their running mates. Very yes. interesting. You know, very, complying very well to the uh, uh, UN convention that demands for a 50-50 uh, representation in government. Yeah. You know, uh, from your side, why do you think women really, they have got that, what it takes to help spearhead the governance of this country? Uh, I will answer this question like that. Yeah. You know, uh, the word economy is a Greek word. It comes from... Uh, uh, the household and it's happening in the house mm. yeah everything that happens there now how do you relate it to a woman and i want to show you the importance of a woman first of all a woman is a very important person in our society mm. because each one of us name it nine months mm. we are carried and after that we'll be protected to make sure that we we thereafter you can box the woman sure. So this is the importance of that woman. Now, why did I mention the economy? The woman is the best economist of the world. Okay. 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 You come back home. You find a woman, there's something there you are. Right? How? Because a woman is the best economist of the world. A woman will know how to take care of his, her home. A woman will know how to feed the children. Because it's like a country. A country has got children. A home has got children. It's a woman who takes care of the home. So why don't we amplify the activities of woman, a woman so that he can be in parliament, she can be in parliament, mm. so that she can be part and parcel of what we men are destroying. Mm. Moreover, statistics have, have it that there are more men who are involved in corruption than women. Yes, because women look at things differently. Right. Women mostly, they are more principled than us. So, but then we want to keep them there in, 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 in the kitchen. No, 
we need to integrate as many women as possible. What I've seen in my, my, my career, my business career, mm -hmm. I've seen that women, when they do something, they do it much more better than us men. So therefore, we need to bring as many women as we can in parliament. As many young women, don't bring women who are tired. I respect them, I respect them, but let them go and rest. Bring young people. Look at our, our Lucy Changwe. Powerful, young, vibrant, around 40s. She's eager to take it. And he, I, I mean, she's the most to uh, uh, compare. So I have the best VP, I have the best vice president. Mm. Yeah, compare. You actually, basically yourself compare because uh, even uh, others are, are mocking, you know, some of you to say they are leading by example and uh, it goes to show that they are in charge of the country. Yes. You know, ECL decided to pick on Professor Nkandlu. According to him, Professor yeah. Nkandlu has got everything that it takes to be a, a leader. No. He demonstrated it before. The track record is there. Uh, you you know, so they are saying you are uh, now copying and pasting in your political parties. No. Uh, let me say this. Mm. I, I don't like talking about uh, personalities. Yeah. I don't like pointing fingers. I've got the respect for each and every yeah. person. Yeah, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want, want also somebody to start pushing me to say, oh, Steve, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. No, let's and talk we, about the leadership. We will not do that. We, but, but, we will not talk about individuals. But, but let, let me... Let, let me not. just comparing. Yes. Yes. This leadership that you are talking about, mm. it has got a tag on it. Right. it the first tag was uh, something to do with the university to do with the, the bursary. The second tag, which ate me so much, mm. is uh, actually condoning and uh, amplifying tribalism, right. which I went on air, I said, look, I would want to see the president uh, actually firing that person mm. for actually bringing up tribalism. Mm. Yeah, so those are the things. I don't want to point fingers and things like that. But there's a tag with these people, some of them, that they cannot, they have failed us before. Where do you we, take I'm uh, saying reformation uh, of an individual? Why do you take uh, issues of forgiveness? Because the Bible is clear that we are all short of the glory of God. Meaning that we can make a mistake. Yes. You know, but again, when I make a mistake, don't blame me for my past mistakes. Yes. Um, Why can't we say, even those that have made a mistake in the past, Mr. P, have changed? If I've, you, you know what I said before? Sure. I said, making a mistake is not a problem. But not uh, uh, realizing and correcting it is the biggest problem. Right. So if I realize, and people have told me to say this is a mistake, mm -hmm. I should go on a podium and tell the people I'm sorry that I said that. I shouldn't have said that. Right. But did this person go? No, this person amplified it more and more. Mm -hmm. That means it's a stance, it's a position that that person has taken. Right. So God will not forgive you if you don't ask. You keep on doing it. If you go, you ask, God will forgive you every time. People will forgive you if you ask. If you don't, where, where, how do they start? Yeah? So we keep on talking about it. But, <coughs> but as we are there, um, uh, Mr. Piri, this, this country has got another problem of recycled leadership. People jumping from one tree to another like a monkey. Why? It's because they don't believe in any ideology, in any doctrine. For me, my party, if my party, what my party believes in is the same as what, he, what he, another party says, socialist or, or DP or so, if what we believe in is the same, there's no problem. But I cannot move from two different parties, from this party to another. That means there's something I'm following. What is it? Is it a job? Is it money? What are you following? Because if you believe in ideology, you will stick there where you are and you wait until it works. You don't see it. You've got recycled politicians mm -hmm. who jump from one tree to another in search of something good. At at Musenera Kwakawa. Yes, go fund and you could find the It's debatable. It's debatable. If you, you talk about recycled politicians, it's debatable. Yes, they are recycled politicians. Uh, almost all these leaders that are presiding our affairs today. They are coming from different political parties. 
You can talk about the president himself, Edgar Lung. He's coming from uh, the, the, the UPND. Uh, uh, you know, it's, a bit, it's, it's a bit different. You know, it's, a diff it's a you different. You can talk about different. people that, that are like <coughs> UPND today. And they are coming from the PF and the likes. Let's talk about your running mate. I want, I, I want to explain that. Mm. If, if, if today mm. I was standing on PF sure. and PF drops me, I go and stand on UPND, what am I? What do I believe in? Right. Yeah? But if somebody, I will tell you about my running mate. Mm. My running mate was the, uh, a minister sure. in Mwanawasa. Mm. And he, she stood, she stood, she has got her thing. She didn't jump. She was going to go to PF, she would have gone to UPND. She, today, they will tell you to say the winning ships, the winning word is UPND and PF. Mm. They will tell you that it's there. A lot of people, you have said it. Yeah. So if she was that particular, she would have gone to, she's a very popular, she would have gone to PF. Mm. They would have taken her. She would have gone to UPND. But she comes to us, to me, who has got no money, because she believes in what I'm saying. She has heard me. I'm a bit different. So she's picked. That's, that's, for me, what I'm looking for. Right. Yes. You are coming at the time, Mr. Nurenda. At the time, you are vying to, uh, to their president at the time when the country is, uh, you know, endowed with a lot of problems, yes. if you wish. Yes. As we speak <coughs> right now, if you go to UTH, the doctors, they are on strike, meaning that the, people, uh, the, the lives of people are not safe. Yeah. These are people that are supposed to help to cure those problems or those diseases. Mm. But our men and women, they have decided to go and, uh, to, to go, to, to go and go slow. Mm. You know, and if you look at their banner, it's very clear. Looking at the message they are demanding, it's about, uh, you know, salary arrears. You can talk about um, uh, more doctors to be, to, to be employed. Yeah. You can see that they are also advocating on behalf of other people. Yeah. They employ the doctors to be employed. Yeah. You know. And yet we've got a lot of people that are graduated with a doctorate, <coughs> but they can't be employed. If you were there mm. as President Stephen Nirenda and Nare, mm. how would you resolve these problems? So you, you agree with me that ever since it's been going down, down, down. You also agree with me that PF has run it down because mm. there are no doctors. Doctors are on the street, but they are not being employed because they don't have money. Of course, you can only so, employ a number of them, which you can manage to you know, yes, the, the, satisfy. Maybe some no, people. the international rate mm. of, 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 of uh, ratio mm. of doctor to patients mm. is about one doctor to 300. Mm. And uh, us in Zambia here, it's about one doctor to over thousands mm. of, of, of patients. You see that? Mm. So what does that show? It shows that already they have failed. It shows that a, one doctor cannot manage 1,000, 2,000. So these others will be attended to. If you are not attended to and it's critical, you will die. So a lot of people, they are dying because of negligence. But <clears throat> you, you, your question is that I've entered politics at the time where there are so many problems. You know, why should I enter politics if there are no problems? I shouldn't. I, I, I have seen that there are so many problems. That's why I've stood up. Mind you, me, I'm a businessman. What I'm endowed to is to transform certain things into, into, into profitability, into profit. But I've left those things. I've seen that this nation, it needs, it has got serious leadership problems. And that's why I've said, I'm going to stand up now where there are so many problems so that I can provide leadership. I look for members who I can make a leadership with to make sure that these problems are sorted out. Mm. And now, looking at this problem that is there at UTH, sure. <coughs> you, you asked me whether I know how the government works, something mm. like that. Before this thing happens, <coughs> the any nation has got its intelligence. Mm. The president has been informed, perhaps a week or two weeks or so, when it just started. We have very powerful intelligence system here. Mm. They have told him to say there is something like that. Yeah. The, yes. So it is up to him to mitigate it, to manage it. You manage critical situations. This is not a thing to play with. Sure. You are playing with fire. So if they were willing, they could have managed it. If the West comes to the West, even the president can address those people. 
they, they will feel that the president is with us, that they will feel that the president is concerned. He will push the minister away to say, look, let those guys come in front. I'm going to spend two minutes or three minutes. Even if it's in campaign period, he should leave his campaign because he is still the president. He's the executive. He's running this. There's no minister right up now. He should have gone to say, UPS, bring those people. I will meet them. I was five, five minutes. Those people wouldn't have gone for, for, on a strike because they have, they have heard that the man is in control, that the man will come to their plight. So that's why I'm saying, if the leadership is serious enough, certain things shouldn't happen. Because he's, in, he's informed. He's informed in the morning, afternoon, what, at any given time when it is critical. He has all the information on his fingertips. So he shouldn't have left it like that. So people are dying. People are unattended to. I want us to marry to the education sector as well. That is in their need of, uh, you know, uh, human resource. Um, I remember some three months ago, four, five months ago, I think, yeah, the process is still ongoing. Government decided to recruit 1,200 uh, teachers countrywide. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, against the huge number of teachers that are roaming the street right now. Yes. If you were in charge of this country, Mm. How best would you improve the sector, the education sector? <clears throat> and that's something for me which amuses a number of people because mm. it's like um, not most of you, each time you appear on radio, TV, we, we could do the, maybe uh, your statement in newspaper, you don't talk about the welfare of uh, civil servants in this country. Mm. If I can remind you very well, what made Michael Chinukyasada to win the election in 2011 was his well simplified message about the plights of the civil servants in Zambia, mm. or the workers, mm. the more money as well as the more jobs. Mm. Just there. Yes. People went berserk and went, went to vote for him. Yes. You know, which is different today. Uh, a few people, or should I say, uh, maybe for the uh, benefit of, 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 of the people there, that none of you are in, instilling confidence mm. in the people of Zambia, or the civil service, mm. or the civil servants, with regards to improving their welfare. Yes. What would you do if you were there Mr. as uh, president? Mr. Mr. Piri, mm. uh, I'm sorry if I'm going to, 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 to bring you a bit Please. down. When you call me here, mm. do a bit of some research. Right. You should see what do we say about education mm. ourselves. What do we say about teachers? Right. We have said ourselves. Mm. By the way, there are over 40,000 teachers that are roaming. Mm. As far back, some 10 years, some more than that, mm. they went... I, I, one of our members or two of our members, they are teachers, but they have never taught. Mm. It's only five or six years. They have never taught right. because there's no job. Or oh, the job is there, mm. but they don't have money. This is what I said. Right. Figures don't lie. If you can't employ, but the, the place is op open, that means you cannot make it. So these guys have failed on that. Mm. Now, our manifesto, we are saying the most paid civil servant when we take over, it's going to be a teacher. You have heard that? Sure. Yes. We are going to make sure that the, peop the teachers who are in rural areas where there's no entertainment, what and what, they will have more incentives. We have told you to also to say the, uh, the, 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 the infrastructure uh, for, for, uh, in schools, um, uh, that also we are going to make sure that uh, the private schools or the government schools are again better than the private schools. Mind you, us when we were growing up, when we were going to school, we used to laugh at people who were going to private school. We are saying, unless you don't have the brains, you fail, that's when now you go to a private school. So civil servants are well taken. The second most paid civil servant for us is going to be a policeman. A policeman is a very important person. He takes care of our security all over. Now, if you're going to subject a policeman to poverty and what and what, you are telling him to be corrupt and don't blame because he has to survive. He has to take his children to school and so on and so on. Now you are putting yourself at risk because there's somebody who is taking care of you as a guard, but you are subjecting him to corruption. He will sell you. So all those things, they are very well taken care of in our manifesto. We are saying, Civil service is going to change. It's not going to be the same. 
But my dear, as I'm saying that, do you know that the civil service that we're having now is the most, is the, that's where the corruption is at its highest level. It's not as a politician. The politicians are still for five years. But if you are employed and you've got a system for 20 years, you push in a system there. There are other people that have been jailed. I don't want to mention them. How much money did they? The civil service needs to be cleaned up. There is no way a minister can come and he, and he be indulged or be in, in corruption, be, be found in corruption without collaborating with the civil service. Because the civil service are the ones who have all those resources. The civil service, they are, they are the ones who sign. The minister doesn't sign. He gives orders. So if I'm doing my right job, why should I accept the, the, the orders for somebody who has been there for two, two years or three years? I know he's going. I'll say no. But anyway, there's another reason behind it. The reason behind it is what I said, to say the, the country has got more problems than the, the reason behind it is that uh, the powers which are with the executive, they're just too much. They need to be reduced. So that the, he, 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 even if, if I, I tell the president to say, Mr. President, this thing, I think it has to be done in this procedure. The president should not say we are fired. He, has, he will not have the right to do that. But today, the president has got the right to do anything. They've got the right to fire anybody. He's got the right now to pick a policeman to say, there is this Nyerenda president of Kayauko. Go and take him out. They will come here and take you out. In a proper, proper, well-organized state where you freedom of speech, where there's democracy, proper democracy, such a thing will not happen. They will tell you that too much freedom sometimes brings uh, problems. It's the same like uh, in a home. When you give too much freedom to children, there will be problems. No. You know. no, 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 no. Mm. Those are rules and regulations. And I, I spoke yesterday, I was on radio, I spoke about it. You know the problem that also we have in this country? Right. There is no, we don't respect the, the law. The law that is, you don't, just go on the street, you see a minibus driver, he drives, he sees, he's not, he, he's breaking the law. But that is not only the minibus, the minibus driver. It happens even at higher offices. You've seen people manipulating the, 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 the constitution to suit themselves. This person who manipulates the constitution to suit himself is no different than that minibus driver who turns the minibus It's the same. It's just different levels. We don't respect the law that is there. Until that time, this country will not develop. I appreciate Mr. Nyerenda for having um, explained fully. I deliberately asked you that question about the welfare of our civil servants in Zambia <coughs> because we're in the midst of the campaigns so that you could be able to remind those that might have forgotten uh, regarding your, 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 your intending policies that you are going to implement. Let's now move on to another critical issue now where we are, where we've been told now that um, um, the Zambia Correctional Service has decided to establish a law that will enable now the inmates, uh, formerly known as the prisoners, to go on a vacation of 14 days. Mm. You know, there's a lot of talks out there as usual. You know, in Zambia, there is, you've, you've said it yourself that it's like we love talking too much in Zambia. Mm. You know, and this is part of the talks going on among you members of the opposition. You seem not to be, to be happy. You, you're very <coughs> agitated about this move. Mm. What would be your position? You know, um, Mr. Peel, mm. if you and me will live together and you don't trust me, mm. whatever I'm going to do, you will not like it. And right up now, if I tell you, mm. nobody trusts this government. We don't. So for, for, for me, I will say one thing. Mm. <coughs> Why does this government bring this now, now, in the midst of the elections? He wants it, they want it to benefit the current, the incumbent. Mm. Yes, definitely. Those are speculations, not so. No, 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 no. Because I mean, no, no, you, you, you see. Laws can uh, be implemented, can be enacted at any time. Tima Gamba, Tima Gamba Guti, mm. um, uh, Pabinepa Choka Chusin in Shipari, something. Mm. Smoke without, there's smoke, there's mm. something. 
I started by telling you to say, there must be trust. Mm. If there's trust, you will tell me to say, ah, you are just speculating. But there's no trust because we have seen that these people are doing things that are not right. Mm. Shortly, you saw them lining up people, giving money to people like that. Right up now, they brought this thing, they are giving a, a COVID relief. Mm. Good for those people who get money. You take 2,500, you give to somebody just like that. Where do you get that money from? Is there not anything better that you can do for that person than to take that 2,500? Some of them, they take it for drinking some. It does not help. It doesn't. You need to impact people with knowledge and proper empowerment to make sure that they can live for, on, on it for years and years. So the same, this is what they have done today. Now, do you think a, pro, a prisoner who you have taught today, to say from today onwards, you will have two weeks at home. Mm. If he goes to the ballot paper, do, don't you think this person is going to vote for the person who has given that freedom? Definitely he will. So that is not a speculation. So your that, argument in short is about the timing. It's wrong. About the timing. Well, it's not, 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 not only the timing. Mm. Not only the time. I don't know. I can't, I, I don't, I'm not privy to that information. Yeah. Whether they are selective or not. Because you can't do for everybody. No, no, no. It's not everybody. Yes. It's about those that have reformed. Yes. Remember, it was called the, the, the prisons yes. or prisoners. Mm -hmm. And now they've been changed to inmates, which is now a Zambia correctional service. Yes. Meaning that they are being corrected away from the usual punishments. Mm -hmm. So maybe this could be a, a, a project to P. try them. Those are. Because they are going to, to behave in society. Just that those my are, simple interpretation. Those are rhetorics. You, know, you can put them. Now, this, this, this interpretation, whether you like it or not, mm. it is very clear. It is married with something. I'm going to do this for you and make sure when that day comes, you remember me. That's what it is. We are not small people. We know. You will see it. Why didn't they wait until after, after 12th of August? Then they implement it. Why did not wait? I want to see whether these people, they are going to be giving money to people after 12 of August, lining them up and giving them money, calling everybody to go to DMMU to be given Miremi. I want to see that, but believe you me, it will not happen. You will invite me here, and we are going to analyze this thing. Just under a minute, I'll ask you two questions that I would want you to answer within a minute. Uh, you are no longer, just to make it clear, as you person that camera, are you still part of the now called opposition or UPND alliance, or you are no longer there? You are now on your own. For the sake of not confusing <coughs> the viewers out there. The second <coughs> question again would be uh, there are two candidates, presidential candidates, who have been petitioned, and that is ECL or the Periodic Front, as well as yourself. We saw that statement coming from uh, uh, Mr. Mo, your former VIP, actually, mm. has petitioned your candidate. Mm. Are you going to survive that? First of all, I haven't been petitioned right. to correct that. There's no right. petition right. that is against so that me. Right here now to yes, clarify. there is no. Yeah. There are people who are talking things perhaps to discredit to make sure that my, the people that sympathize with us, there is no petition that uh, 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 is, uh, is come to Stephen Irenda right. or there's nothing like that. Right. One. Two, in fact, Mr. Maboshe cannot petition because he will be committing a uh, 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 contempt. Of course, if he wants, he should go and join what is in court. So that's number one. Number two, um, <clears throat> I, I, um, I, I, you want me to comment on the, the petition? The alliance? The UPND yeah, the alliance. The petition okay. Yeah. Uh, the alliance, the... <laughs> are you still part of it or not? Uh, first of all, we are not part of it. Right. Secondly, there's no alliance. It's the only UPND. That's why it's called UPND. How can you call UPND alliance? It's UPND. This is not an alliance. I don't, I don't see who is there. If it was an alliance, perhaps the president would have come from UPND. The number two would have come from the members of the alliance. But you see, the president is from UPND. The vice president or the running page is also from UPND. What alliance is that? That's not an alliance. <laughs> you want to, I don't know what that is, whatever it is. But us, we, have, we are not in that alliance. If ever we are in an alliance, it is an alliance of convenience, like to say, okay, we are going to, to fight the, 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 the Public Order Act together. 
we are going to fight in this injustice together, but not electoral alliance. We are not in electoral alliance with anyone. That's, that's why I'm a candidate, a presidential candidate. If we were inside, I was going to be, you have seen the people that are lined up there. Finally, um, let's get into my last segment that I love the most before ending the program. That is a swearing uh, segment. I want you to face into that camera and reaffirm to the people of Zambia that all you've said on this program, you are your own words, you mean it, and you stand by it. <laughs> and a minute as we go. <laughs> I know you are telling me that because you have been threatened. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Everything that I'm saying here, it is solely Stephen Miranda and perhaps Narep. It has nothing to do with this institution. It's ours. I know. Don't get certain. Yeah? Right. Report without fear, favor, or, yeah? Report, we have integrity in what you are doing. No one should threaten you. Don't fear. Me, I don't fear. The only thing that I fear, the only person that I fear is God himself. You, you've wrongly read my mind. Uh, mine is to really, uh, we've seen people today, they will say this thing, tomorrow again they change. You know, yeah. I cannot work maybe with the, the, that leader there because he's not qualified, you know. And then tomorrow they'll go and dance with the same person. Yeah. That's where this wearing in ceremony uh, is all about. Okay. Exactly. Not about being intimidated. <laughs> That's away from that. I do swear, exactly. really, that whatever I've said here is solely myself and no one else. And believe you me, I am a man of principles, integrity, and the sense of uh, 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 sacrifice. I am truly standing for this country. I'm truly uh, there that I will turn this country into something that is going to be good for the Zambian. Zambia is for Zambians. Mind you, every time tell yourself, it's your country. No one should come from somewhere and dance on your top. Look at what is happening now. You, when you are on the street, a foreigner is higher than what you are. You even have inferior complexes. You've got, we are not going to accept that. Not in our government. We will make sure that the Zambians are the ones running the show. Everybody else, they are our friends who embrace them, but they have to be under us, not on top of us. This issue that you are saying, expatriate is coming to work here. He's going to get 10 times as salary as the Zambian. Where have you seen it? If you am going to start working, I worked in Europe. I didn't get 10 times salary, and I was, I was a special engineer, but I didn't get 10 times. I got what the, the, the scale that is there. When we take over, there's not going to be any expatriate coming here to come and get more salary than a Zambian if you don't want to stay there. They come here they, 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 to come, not to come. I'm, of course, when I talk like that, people will think that I'm against a foreigner. I'm not against a foreigner. I've got more foreigner friends than Zambian friends. And they know I speak like that. They know and they agree with me what I'm talking about. This is our country. All right. Allow me to appreciate she once again for coming. We thank you so much. And we continue monitoring your party activities from now until to 12 August. Thank you. We are uh, make sure that you vote Nareb, you vote Stephen Nirenda. Right. We are the right people to transform this country. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, we end our discussion here. My guest has been uh, Stephen Nirenda, who is president of the National Restoration Party, Nareb. Let's find out from now until the D-Day. My name is uh, Innocent Piri, IP. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night. <laughs>